This, my friends, is not a bowling shoe. Nope. <laughs> Ginger Runner. What's up everybody, Ethan Newberry here, the Ginger Runner with another GingerRunner.com review. I am reviewing two shoes from Ultra, and you are currently watching my review of the Ultra 1 squared, or 1 2, 1 squared. But I want to remind you that there are in fact two shoes that I'm reviewing today, so you can either watch this one, just stick around and watch the Ultra 1 squared review, or click right here, click the Ultra Paradigm, and you can go watch that review. Three, two, one. Hey! <laughs> All right, we've reviewed Ultra before, so we know a little bit about the shoes themselves. There's zero drop, nice wide toe box. It's kind of their standout feature set that I love about Ultra shoes. This shoe right here is the follow-up to their one shoe, but it's different from the ground up. The midsole, the upper, everything is different. I never wore the one, so I can't say how it's different than the one, but I can tell you this, the one squared is so far one of my favorite shoes of 2014. No joke. Despite my love and adoration for this particular shoe, there are a couple of weird things that I don't really like. I hope that they remedy at some point, but overall this shoe is really awesome. It feels like an entirely different shoe manufacturer created this one, and I love it. But let's start the review with things that I like about the Ultra 1 squared. First of all, it's light, just over seven ounces. It's a nice, light, trainer or race shoe. A majority of that weight comes in the midsole material, but that's also one of my favorite parts, so I don't know how much more weight they can trim off of this shoe, and I just like it nice and light. Wee, wee, wee. Flexible. Look at this, the shoe is super flexible. That's made in part by the grooves that they have embedded into the outsole midsole material here. Really allows that shoe to flex in all directions when your foot strikes the ground, I like it. Cushioning, the midsole material that they use in this particular shoe is soft. It's nice and soft, but it's also super springy, nice and responsive. I don't know what recipe they use in this particular EVA material, but I like it. This really was the first Ultra that I ran in that felt not only soft, but alive. The Kush is good. The upper, it's really thin, really flexible, allows your foot to breathe. There's not a lot going on. The overlays are welded on, very minimal, seamless upper, super light and flexible. I mean, everything about the upper is fantastic. Fast, the shoe itself is fast. With that zero drop platform, you just want to increase your cadence, you want to increase your speed. It feels like a racing flat, but it has a little bit more cushioning in there, and it really lends itself to speed. In fact, this is the shoe that I wore at the Big Sur Marathon. I was going back and forth, should I wear this shoe? Is it something that I can wear for an entire marathon? And guess what? I did and it was awesome. And of course, wide toe box, zero drop. That is what Ultra is known for, and it is definitely something that I like in a shoe that I run in. Helps this shoe stand out from the rest, and I like it. Now I could praise this shoe all day, but there are a couple of things that get my fanny. Get my fanny. Upper wear. First thing I noticed after my very first run was some of the paint chipping and peeling off. You can even see it here in the midsole layer. All that paint is just coming off. After one run in these, that blew my mind. It does not hinder the performance. Honestly, that could be because this is a pre-production model. So perhaps they fix these issues in the production run. I hope they have. Midsole wear. Now this is something that is concerning me about the future of this shoe and future wear if I put more miles on it. I have about 80 to 90 miles on this shoe as it is now. But the midsole material, which is also part of the outsole seems to be flattening out and getting a lot of wear. It scares me just a bit with this particular shoe because I want this thing to last forever. I don't know if I'll be able to get a couple hundred miles out of the shoe based off of how much it's worn down in the few miles that I've worn it. I want it to last forever. Like love. Looks. Now I will tell you that I'm a fan of the looks of this particular shoe. I think they took a risk by making it look like a bowling shoe and I kind of like that. I like a company that takes risks. But there are people out there that will not like the looks of this shoe because it looks like a bowling shoe. I get it, I totally understand. I also wish there were brighter colors. I think the other color state of this is brighter, which I do dig. But this shoe will either intrigue you or turn you off. Wide ankle material. Now, this is my problem with a lot of Ultras is that the ankle materials are very wide, very thick. It just seems like too much material back there. This particular shoe, the one squared, seems to work better than others, including the Paradigm. But overall, I think their whole heel ankle area needs some work. So redesign. And that is it. That is it for dislikes. Nothing too crucial because the performance of the shoe still stands out. I still very much like it. I will continue to put miles on this shoe. I kind of consider this my secret weapon shoe. I'll keep it in my closet. I'll save it for the special occasions. Marathons, races, and I really like it. I haven't tried the Kinvara 5 yet, but this definitely gives the 4 a run for its money. Now how does it compare to the Paradigm? 
Well, it's a totally different shoe. Far lower stack height on this particular shoe. It's definitely more of a racing flat, training flat. It's not as minimal as other brands' flats. However, because of the lightweight nature of this shoe, I definitely consider it a Speed Demon go-to trainer race shoe. I definitely like the upper on the shoe more than the Paradigm. Just basically every quality about this shoe I like a little bit better. So let's get on with the points. Quality, I gotta give it three out of five. It's a lower score, but that's mainly because of the paint chipping, the EVA wear, and my concern that the shoe won't last a ton of mileage. Comfort, I will go as far as to say five out of five. The shoe is extremely comfortable. The upper is really nice, soft, flexible. The midsole material is nice and soft, cush with a bit of responsiveness in it. Everything about it, super comfortable. Price, at $95, I'm gonna give it four out of five. It's below a $100 price point, which I really like, especially for something that's a little bit lighter, more of a racing flat. You don't know how many miles you're actually get out of it. So I would like to round up to five, but I'm going to give it four out of five because you're definitely spending more for less. Less that has some quality control issues. And finally, looks. I'm going to give it four out of five because I like it. I docked at a point because some of you might not like it. And that brings our total to 16 out of 20, but I'm going to say it's a higher 16 out of 20 because it is such a great shoe. I ran the Big Sur Marathon in it. That is testament to how much I do enjoy this shoe. It is a good. I want to remind you guys, if you haven't, go click this, click that shoe, go watch the Ultra Paradigm review. It's a double review day. So, you know, go watch that one. Three, two, one. But I appreciate you for sticking around and watching the Ultra One Squared. One, two, one, I have to make a point, Ultra, by calling this the one squared, you're painting yourself into a corner because you're going to get one squared, one cubed, but you're going to find it difficult to move on from there. Think about calling it the one two or the one point two. Naming conventions get my goat when they're not done right. That's it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, like, favorite, and share this video, and also subscribe to youtube.com slash The Ginger Runner. I am on all the social networks over on Twitter at The Ginger Runner, on Facebook, facebook.com slash The Ginger Runner, on Instagram at Ethan Newberry, and of course, gingerrunner.com. The hub for all things great and ginger. And don't forget that every single Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I do a show called Ginger Runner Live, where I will broadcast live out there to the world, and we have people in the chat room that can chat with us, and I bring on guests and all that good stuff. Don't miss it. It's also available on iTunes if you'd like to download the podcast. I have, like, a bunch of episodes already up there, so go check that out. Link will be in the description below. I hope you guys are getting out there training hard, racing harder, and partying the hardest. I know I am. Hashtag train race beer. We'll see you guys next time. Ba-pow!